Hello everybody. In this video, I would like to demonstrate how you can use our software Image to LUT to create a look or a lookup table from any image. To achieve this, you can load two images into Image to LUT, a source image from which the look will be created and a target image in which you can see how the look affects a certain image. The target image only serves as a reference and will not affect the lookup table generated by Image to LUT. It should be that way because a lookup table from Image to LUT should be universally applicable so that your look archive or your LUT packs, which you create with the software, look really good on many different images and videos. As soon as images are loaded in Image to LUT, the source image is analyzed by our special algorithm and a look is created and applied to the target image. This generally works with any image, but in my experience, the best effects are achieved with film and cinema looks. As you can see, this actually works really well even if source and target image have different lighting atmospheres. Of course, the target image still looks different, but it is not our goal to create a night scene from a day scene but to extract a look from an image which works with as many different target images as possible. In order to adjust my LUTs at a later time or to create variations from it, I have created a folder containing source images which, in my eyes, work particularly well in Image to LUT. I can always click through the folder to check which look would best fit a certain image. If you want to test a look for which you have not yet saved an image to your hard drive, you can always go through a photographer's website and search for an interesting look, utilize the Google image search, or find the trailer of a Hollywood blockbuster or your favorite TV series on YouTube and take a screenshot. Make sure not to copy any black bars or white logos. Otherwise, especially the contrast ratio may be distorted. To demonstrate, I visit Jochen Kohl's website. He is an internationally renowned photographer and photography teacher from Dusseldorf. On his site, I take a screenshot of some of his free works with model Julia Smolik. As you can see, the look has not yet been adapted quite perfectly. The complementary color contrasts in particular can weaken each other if a lot of opposite tones occur within similar brightness ranges. To counteract this, we can exclude skin tones from the analysis of the target image. Of course, now the blue shades dominate the image, tinting the model's skin. This can be a desired effect for cool night looks. For this look, I prevent this by reducing the look's influence on skin tones and pushing the skin tones a little more. There you go. This matches perfectly. In most cases, it makes a lot of sense to use both of the two skin tone controls. The relation between the two really depends a lot on the look you want to create. You can adjust the amount of the overall tint with the topmost control. In most cases, it is really not prudent to go further than the middle since an excessive tinting can cause individual color channels to clip. Especially faded film looks are often rather low in contrast and can reduce the target image's contrast quite a lot. If this is not desired, you can counteract this by bringing the Protect Contrasts control up. 0% means the source image's contrast will be applied. 100% means that the contrast in the target image will remain unaltered. Values higher than 100% will cause the target image's contrast to be amplified even more. Since contrasts are especially relevant in black and white images, it is recommended to use lower values or to deactivate the Protect Contrasts feature. Excluding heavily saturated colors from tinting the look can sometimes result in great effects. Not only does it do the trick for black and white images, but also, depending on the target image, for many other looks. 
Image to LUT adjusts all colors across the entire brightness range dynamically. In some cases, warping the color space towards one single color results in a more homogeneous look. You can try this with the One Color Look feature. Since different areas of the image will not be treated differently anymore, this may result in a different contrast ratio in the target image. If you like the look you have just generated, you can save the edited image to your computer, export the look for further use in another image or video editing software, or transfer it to our software Unlimited Filters. Use the program settings to determine which LUT formats will be saved. If you want to change a video's color, I recommend you first take a screenshot of your video in a video editing software. Then you can use it as a reference by loading it into Image to LUT. After that, you search for a fitting look and optimize it a little. Finally, you export a lookup table and load it into your video editing software if it supports LUTs. Even if you want to apply the look of a background image to a model for compositing, Image to LUT is ideal for the job. Simply load the background image in place of the source image into Image to LUT and maybe also the target image into the lower window for better fine adjustment. If your look is ready, you can export it as an LUT and load it into the software you use for the compositing. This can be done in our programs Chroma Mask and Mask Integrator, in Photoshop, and many video editing programs, basically in all programs which support layers, transparencies, and lookup tables. As you can see, Image to LUT lets you create Hollywood-like looks of amazing quality in no time. By combining the various settings and loading many different images, you can create an almost infinite number of looks and variations. Image to LUT. Epic results with a small tool.